Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I want to read a post from the Red Pill subreddit that I really enjoyed. It's called, She Wants to Feel Small. I remember something my ex long-term relationship said to me once while we were fucking. I love it when you curl me up into a ball. I feel so small. A few months later, I met up with a plate that I hadn't seen in a while. I had been lifting properly for a couple of years, and I'm much bigger than I was when we first hooked up. She commented on it with a large grin. Wow, you're so big now. What happened? While rubbing my arms. What happened? 531 and 3300 kcal a day. That's what happened. The next plate was bitching about her boyfriend while laying on my chest. He was the same height as her and she didn't like it. She told me, I love how little I feel when I'm with you. I love it when you pick me up during sex. I thought about this for a while and came to a few realizations. A huge part of the attraction these girls have for men is the physical dominance. In order to get the tingles for a guy, she needs to feel the dude is much bigger and stronger than her. I've had a lot of problems with tall women and athletes in the past. I can't seem to hook up with tall girls, even though I have size and wit and frame. I'm still just too short for them to get subconsciously aroused. It seems this is a common trope amongst all tall women. They are very picky because they are still subject to the same psychological forces all women are. That is, she is only interested in guys noticeably bigger than her, which can be hard if you're a six foot one girl. There was a girl I was running solid game on once who lifted pretty well, and she treated me like dirt. I just wasn't big enough for her, that was the reason, and it overshadowed everything else. When I saw her with a guy eventually, well this guy was a real fucking beast of a man, an absolute unit. She was like a giddy schoolgirl with him. He was a bit of a dweeb, very blue, but I realized it didn't matter to her. She just wanted to feel small and feminine and young around him. You'll have a hard time gaming women if you're smaller than them, and I don't mean just height-wise. You can be taller, but if you're stick thin, if you look weak, she'll clock onto this and her pussy will be dry. You're better off being fat than skinny for women. At least fat mimics size and hints at strength, which is enough for her. You can get away with being shorter or her height sometimes, but only if you have muscles to make up for it, an absolutely solid frame. There's no way around it. You need to make her feel weak. She needs to feel like you can overpower her at any moment for there to be any way of her being attracted to you. If she feels like she can hold you off in a fight, or if she can stop you from just taking her, it's not possible she can be attracted to you. It might sound fucked up because it kind of is. Women are fucked up after all. One of my plates loved it when I pinned her wrist down during sex and would struggle to break free. I allowed her, not wanting any of that hashtag me too nonsense. Then she would get mad and call me weak, a pussy. <laughs> I had to show her that I was actually holding back a lot and that she could never break free from me even when I was putting in minuscule effort. Never felt her come so hard. Women yearn to be small and smooth and weak and feminine just as much as we want to be big and rough and strong and masculine. It turns them on in irrational subconscious ways. Are you able to make her feel feminine? Are you able to make her feel small? I've only ever been with one girl that was my height and honestly it felt weird. It made me uncomfortable. I'm so used to girls being small and cute and inferior around me that having a girl that felt like my equal in stature left a bad feeling in my stomach. Like I had less control, like I was less masculine. Honestly, I think she felt it too and very much wished I was taller. The only way I managed to get away with it was that there was an age difference between us, and she knew I was smarter and more mature, so this made her feel inferior in other ways. Because that's another important aspect, one that underlies all this small slash tall talk. She doesn't just want to feel small around you, she wants to feel inferior, in every way. She wants to be a small, dumb little girl in your eyes, a little pet owned by a capable, collected and powerful man. If she feels like your equals, or even worse, if she feels like she's better than you in any way, stronger, more intelligent, more socially adept, more emotionally adjusted, you're going to have a lot of problems with her. At heart, she needs you to be better than her in every way. No exceptions. All women fundamentally want to feel inferior to their man. They want, and I cringe saying this because I hate the term, to feel like a little girl with a daddy owning her, even if she can't verbalize it. Once you've lost the dad role, and she no longer feels like your innocent, dumb little plaything, well, she can't bring herself to fuck you anymore. She wants to be owned and dominated, physically and mentally. Are you taller than her? Are you stronger than her? Are you smarter, more in tune with the real world? 
Are you able to hold your own in physical or verbal confrontation? She needs this from you. You can't avoid it. Heck, are you even able to pick her up? I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely loved this post. There's a lot that I want to discuss here, so I'll just take a short break and then we'll get into the analysis. Okay, well, there's so much good stuff to talk about here. I think that the most interesting part is examining the psychology of why women enjoy feeling inferior to men. So I'll save that for the end. We'll start by discussing some of the minor points. I agree with this post, and I think that it's absolutely accurate to say that women enjoy being with a man who they perceive to be superior to them. While there's some aspects of the post that I would probably uh, tweak or change a little bit, on the whole, I agree with its general message. Now, when it comes to the law, men and women absolutely should be treated equally. Obviously, that's a good thing, because we don't want a society with men's rights and women's rights. We want a society with human rights. But in all of this discussion about equality, we've overlooked a basic truth because it's a bit uncomfortable to mention. That is, that while a woman wants respect and equality in the workplace, you know, she doesn't want to be discriminated against because of her gender, she doesn't really want equality in her relationship. She wants to be with a man who she perceives to be superior to her. That's who she finds sexually attractive. She might feel sorry for the timid and kind nice guy who treats her like a goddess and with the utmost respect, that's not the person that's going to make her sexually aroused. You're probably all familiar with stories about hardcore feminist girls who scream and rage about equality, who then happily go into the bedroom with some guy who treats her really rough and she loves it. I have a buddy who briefly dated one of these girls. She was a, a hardcore feminist, really into all of the activism and that stuff. And he would tease her mercilessly about it and she would love it. In the bedroom, she was crazy submissive, would let him do whatever he wanted. I actually asked this question to women in one of my earlier interviews, the one on submission in relationships. I asked them, would you like to be in a relationship of equals or be with a man who you perceive to be better than yourself? About half of the girls said that they would want to be in a relationship of equals. This sucks to say, but don't believe them. I don't think that it's true. I think that this is one of those areas where most women are cognitively dissonant from what they really want. They say what they think is the most politically correct thing to say without taking the time to examine their deepest feelings or look at their past actions. Often, they're not even lying when they say this. They're just not aware of what motivates them at the deepest level of their being. I think that it's funny how this particular realization came to the author of this post that women enjoy being with a man who's superior to them because he saw it play out in the most straightforward way possible. He was just physically larger. He is absolutely correct when he says that women aren't going to be attracted to a man who's smaller or skinnier than they are. And he's also correct when he says that women want you to be superior to them in as many different ways as possible. When I was in Bali, I was on the beach watching the sunset and I struck up a conversation with a girl. She was a Ukrainian girl who worked in France as a cabaret dancer. She was 23 and extremely beautiful. When she told me that she had a boyfriend, I told her that I was going to make some basic predictions about her boyfriend. I predicted that he was going to be older than her. I predicted that he was going to be taller than her. And I also predicted that he was going to make more money than her. I was correct in all three counts. I knew that my predictions would be correct because this girl was absolutely stunning. And with such a high sexual market value, she wouldn't settle for anything less than a man who was superior to her. Now, let me make a confession here. I'm not a big gym guy. I like playing sport, but whenever I've gone to the gym and just done lifting weights, I found the whole thing extremely boring. I know that's not great, and please don't take my example as any kind of advice to how to live your life. You absolutely should be going to the gym. So, you know, do as I say, not as I do. Now, in my life, I've noticed that not having big muscles instantly disqualifies me as a sexual prospect for some women. I can see it as I'm speaking to them. We might be having a great time, getting along really well, very intellectually stimulating conversation, but there's no part of them that's feeling sexually attracted to me because at a base level, they're just not feeling that superiority. I'm like the guy in the post. When it comes to really well-built women or women who are taller than me, I just disqualify them as a potential sexual prospect. I might really enjoy their company and they might be a really good friend, but there's no real attraction there at a base level. So what do you do if you're a guy like me who either through genetics or just basic laziness is never going to be built like the rock? Well, the important thing is to make yourself superior in other ways rather than just the physical. For me, it's about intelligence, wisdom, self-growth, things like that. I've always done extremely well with girls who are sapiosexual. 
For other guys, it might be about how much money they make, uh, how socially calibrated they are, how much status they enjoy. Obviously, the more of these boxes that you can tick, the better. You don't have to be the absolute best at something, but so long as you're superior to her, she will find that attractive. Even if you're not a super crazy macho dude with lots of muscles, I still think that it's important that physically you're stronger than the woman that you're dating. So for me, I'm not going to feel particularly masculine if I'm hanging around a bunch of professional athletes or cage fighters, but I still enjoy that feeling of masculinity. That's why I've always enjoyed dating girls who are sort of small and dainty and cute, because by comparison, I'm extremely masculine, and it's a really enjoyable experience to feel masculine around a woman. I've always suspected that this is the reason why small, nerdy kind of guys tend to attract Asian girlfriends, because Asian culture promotes that kind of submissive feminine kindness in their women, and so these guys still get to have their experience of masculinity in that relationship. Women enjoy watching men be masculine. They revel in it. It's like the author of this post said, women absolutely loved it when he was able to pick them up because it made her feel small and in the arms of someone who was big and strong. When he was being gentle with one of his lovers in the sexual experience, she accused him of being weak and actually called him a pussy. I mean, think about that, that's crazy. But at that moment, she's not in politically correct brain mode. She's in raw animal instinct sexual mode. For those of you who have studied pickup artist stuff, you're probably familiar with the term neg. It's a form of flirtation where you subtly sort of insult the girl. You say something like, oh wow, you wear a lot of makeup, don't you? Or I could never date you, you're too weird. Something like that. When these guys are trying to pick up really high quality girls, the negs can get quite intense. I've seen videos online of guys openly calling women sluts and whores, telling them that they're ugly, and women absolutely loving it. Why is this? What's going on here? For a really blue-pilled guy, this doesn't make any sense at all. Why would a woman respond positively to such a mean comment? It's because of the reasons that are spoken about in this post. If a man is confident enough to speak down to a woman like that, it demonstrates that he is superior to her, which she finds attractive. Of course, there's no need to be insulting to women in order to demonstrate superiority, but there's no denying that it works. It does require very, very solid social calibration, but once you've practiced and you've got it down, it can be used to achieve very quick results. Now, I don't agree with the author when he says that women are fucked up. To me, that's an intellectual cop-out. It's oversimplifying a situation because you don't want to put the work in to actually discover the psychological causes of behavior and motivation. When you stop and think about it, you realize that there is a reason why women respond positively to negative comments. It might look fucked up on the surface, but there is a certain logic, a certain rationale behind it. That's what I want to talk about next. The psychology of why women want to be with a man who they perceive to be superior to themselves. I'll take a short break and then we'll get into it. So why do women want to be with a man who they perceive to be superior to themselves? The short answer is, they want to feel safe. For those of you who are familiar with the works of Jordan Peterson, you will have heard him speak about the yin-yang symbol of Taoism. You've got the yin of chaos and the yang of order. Now we tend to associate chaos with the feminine and order with the masculine. When a woman wants a strong, confident man who's superior to her, she wants him to protect her from the chaos of the outside world and the chaos that's inside her. To be with a man who's physically strong, financially wealthy, and extremely intelligent makes a woman feel safe because she feels confident in his ability to handle whatever chaos the world throws at him. He's physically strong enough to beat up aggressors and defend her against people who would attack her. He makes enough money to protect her from homelessness and starvation and he's intelligent enough to see through the tricks and manipulations of anyone who might try and take advantage of her. At a core level, women understand that it's men's biological role to protect women, and so when a superior man comes along, she responds sexually. If she feels herself to be more capable than the man she's interacting with, she might really like him, but a huge part of her brain will be thinking, well, what do I need him for? She will never respond to that man sexually. But this part is quite obvious. Most people understand that women want to be with a superior man to protect them from the dangers of the outside world. What's less obvious is how women want men to protect them from the dangers inside themselves. Deep down, beneath all of the politeness and civility of modern society, there lies a destructive and chaotic force that will destroy everything it comes in contact with. This is 
the dark feminine. Women are aware of its existence. They can feel it deep down inside themselves. They live in fear that this destructive and irrational force will burst forth from within them and destroy everything that it touches. This is why it makes women feel so safe when a man calls them out on their bullshit. They might try some lies, some manipulations, some deceptions, but if their partner sees clearly what they're doing and says firmly, stop it, cut that out, it makes them feel relieved. For the first time, they don't need to be so vigilant in keeping their chaos from erupting forth because they have a strong male partner who they trust will keep them in line. This is why men who never stand up to their female partners, who let them do and say whatever they want, no matter how destructive, eventually become repulsive to women. It's like they're screaming out, can't you see I'm being an irrational bitch right now? I'm fucking crazy and I'm so mad at you for not calling me out on it. A real man wouldn't let me act like such a spoiled, entitled princess. This is the psychology behind some shit tests. When women say something rude or insulting, it's a huge relief to them to see that it hasn't upset their partner, that their chaos has had no impact on his order. That kind of strength and masculinity can inspire intense sexual attraction. When the author says that women want their partner to be their daddy, this is what he's referring to. A strong, authoritative father figure who has clear boundaries and lays down the law when it comes to what is and is not acceptable behavior. Men and women are different. While men are motivated to find as much freedom as possible, women are motivated to find safety. They don't want to run wild and do whatever they want. That kind of unrestrained freedom scares them. Deep down, a lot of women know that they can be completely irrational, even total bitches. That's why there's such intense pleasure when it comes to things like dominant and submissive sexual play. He might be spanking her, whipping her, insulting her, doing any number of things, and she's absolutely loving it. Because in her mind, she's thinking, that chaotic part of me, that's visible to him. He sees that. He's responding to it. He's keeping it in line. Thank God that he knows that this chaotic part of me exists. Therefore, he won't let it get out of control. If a man is treating a woman as if she's some kind of perfect angel who can do no wrong, it's not going to make her feel safe. In her mind, she's going to be thinking, he doesn't see this chaotic, destructive force that lies within me, and so he's not going to be ordered or masculine enough to make sure that that chaos is kept under control. I don't trust him, and I certainly don't feel safe around him. Ultimately, the lesson is improve yourself. If you become the superior man, all aspects of your life will improve, and you'll improve the lives of all of the women that you come into contact to. Women will find you intensely sexually attractive. If you want to see the deepest side of a woman, both emotionally and sexually, then you need to make her feel safe. So go out and become the kind of guy who makes women feel safe. Improve yourself, become superior, embrace your masculinity, and then you can enjoy your increased level of sexual attractiveness. Before we finish up, I think it's important to mention that for the sake of brevity, I've been speaking in generalizations in this video. Of course, there are always going to be individual exceptions, because every human being is different. Unfortunately, it seems to have become a controversial statement that to say, at least in general terms, equality within a romantic relationship is not ideal. Both men and women will benefit from an arrangement where the man is in a superior position. Again, I'm not saying it's true in every single case, but for the most part, Men and women will have happier and healthier relationships with that kind of dynamic. I want to thank you so much for watching. Please leave a comment below letting us know what your thoughts are on this subject. Also, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, and if you haven't done so already, make sure you've subscribed to the channel. If you would like access to exclusive videos that I put out, things that are a little bit more personal, then check out my Patreon page. There's a link in the description box below. Even just a small amount of money really helps a lot, and it's a great way for you to support the creator. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you again next time.